13th of August. So I've started early this year with the videos for the auctions and the loft that I wanted to come to first is of course Richard Wade and his brother Martin, uh, West Auckland. Probably in my opinion, there might be a few what disagree but not many. Uh, for me we are shadow of a doubt the best loft in the West Durham Amal, which is a big, big organisation. Racing results, ever since I was this big, for years and years and years, incredible. Sprinting, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the best there is, uh, and not big team men either. How many first West Durham Amal? We've had a cracking season this year. Uh, we topped the Western Amalgamation again this year, making 11 firsts in the Western Amalgamation. Mm -hmm. We also had uh, two first NHU Opens. Obviously, you've got to win the Amalgamation yeah. to get a first mm -hmm. NHU Open. <coughs> but the Pigeons have performed uh, fantastic once again, to be fair, you know, week in, week out. Uh, this season started with a ban. We were first and second fed from the very first race of the season. Uh, where we finished third and fourth. We have an official result now every week in the Western Amalgamation, which is what we should have had for a long time, yeah. uh, to allow all members to get the credit they deserve with, and the pigeons. Um, so we've now got an official result. Uh, now with that first race, uh, we, were th we were third and fourth. I think there was just short of 6,000 pigeons away at the first race. Um, and throughout the year, we've we're flying in a very strong federation now. Um, obviously, with the numbers are, are dwindling in the sport, um, and we joined the Western Federation, which is part of the Western Amalgamation. Last year, uh, we ended up top prize winner, and this year we've topped the federation five times with the old birds, sending up the 1,500 pigeons. Obviously, dependent. You know, early part of the seasons and then the birdage drops off but it is a strong federation and uh, at the moment we, we top prize winner uh, we've only got five young bird races left to go but throughout the season as I say we've had a, a fantastic season um, just going back as I say we were first and second fed the first race of the season and we top the federation out of the last all bird race, so consistency right throughout the season, and uh, week in, week out. Yeah, it's like I said, for me, the best loft in Western Mammal by far, in my opinion. Uh, well, we have uh, 330 lofts in the Western Mammal. 330 lofts? Yeah, in the Western Amalgamation. Um, it starts at Richmond and ends up at Prudder, which is about 40 mile maximum. Uh, from north to south yeah. and about 10 mile east to west. Yeah. Um, as I say, uh, up to about 7,000 pigeons now um, at the most uh, weeks, week in, week out. You know, obviously dropping yeah. certain races throughout the season. This year, um, obviously, we did race channel racing, but there was only a select uh, few. There was only 40 members signed up for it in the Western Amalgamation and 230 lofts within the NEHU. So the Western Amalgamation programme this year really has been a, uh, it's been a stiff programme. Out of 15 races, we had seven races over 220 miles. So week in, week out. Um, and obviously competing every week at that level, you know. It's hard, because uh, as I say, we, we race 42, 45 pigeons. We keep double that, because we fly pure Widowwood, and obviously we have partners at home for the cocks and partners at home for the hens. So our maximum, but after a few races, you know the ones what are not going to make the grade or come and we, we'll be down to maybe 37 to 38 pigeons to send week in, week out. Which in this day and age is not not a lot of pigeons by any stretch, it's a comfortable number. Yeah, well we do that. Um, I'll, I'll look after the cocks and I'll Martin will look after the hens. Obviously, if we were just racing 
we both retired now type of thing. Um, if we were only racing one rod, we wouldn't have as many as that to race. So it makes it, we look, I'm looking after one, he's looking after the other. So we've both got plenty to do and obviously um, the training and everything. So, but no, no, we've had a, we've had a fantastic season. We can't say uh, we can't crumble. Yeah. What we're looking for is to be to be totally honest. Is with having it's all right winning your club or winning your fed, but you've got to look at the bigger picture. And when we have an official result now, uh, we in we now, you want your pensions to be in that top twenty result yeah. just to know that you're performing well. It's no good just if you're winning your club or your fed and you're a mile behind in, in that result. And, you, and you're talking top twenty from as many as six to seven thousand. I think the most before. we had this year was seven thousand. Oh up to 7,000 uh, uh, early doors um, and then we were dropping down when we were coming to the Maidstone Nationals uh, 2,400, 2,500 but the very last race of the season uh, which we actually were first club, first fed, first western amalgamation due to losses throughout the season which we never really incurred many ourselves uh, mainly on yearlings uh, but we were actually down the it was the lowest number we've ever had to be fair, 1,750 but it would only be what's in front of you that's it, you well he, when you say top 20 of, of that birdage you name it the, the top 1% well, when you're sending 6,000 bridges the top 1% yeah. and you want them in the first 20 well I think out of 7 of the races we've, we've been in that top 20 um, as I say the first race of the season we were second, uh, third and fourth Two weeks later, we were second, third, fifth, sixteenth. That was six thousand pigeons. Uh, we've had pigeons in it every week. Uh, one week. So the last one in uh, inland, uh, the last one inland race, uh, we were first and second fed, first and second fastest velocity in the top twenty. Uh, there was two thousand eight hundred pigeons in, it, in that one. So. We're first year we've been in the shape of, you know. In Big Bird, it's incredible really, and position-wise, people would say, oh, they're in the best position. But actually, you're not, are you? are not in the best position. Well, you do. We're the same as everybody else. If you get the wind in your favour, then hopefully if your pigeons is on song, uh, you should be in the mix-up. But, you know, we've won on an east wind, and we've won on a west wind. You know, uh, we had a cracking performance out of West Winds and lads had said we really we didn't think you should be on but the pigeons come phenomenal, you know. Uh, but we've had team performances, not just individual. Which is what you're looking for. Yeah. 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 So that's a bit of an intro to results that uh, Richard and his, his brother Martin uh, achieved and have achieved for, for donkey's years. Uh, what we'll do throughout this video in different sections speak about from the, the last race, what's prepared, how we prepare pigeons through malt or breeding, then we'll move on to old birds and then we'll move on to young birds. Right, we're going to speak about uh, the malt, anything particular, what's given in the malt and then preparing them for breeding. Uh, for a lot of people or most of us, the next season begins the Sunday after the last race. Yeah, you take your foot off the pedal, it's just malting, etc. But you still need to be cared for uh, correctly to ensure a good malt. So, after that last race, Richard, anything? Or take us through the couple of months where the pigeons are malting prior to pairing. Well, as soon as the last race is over, obviously these pigeons have been raced on Widowwood. Uh, week in, week out. Uh, the hens are slightly different. We'll pair them up uh, with four races still left in the old bird programme to get them on eggs and yawns for the last four races. The cockbirds is widowed right throughout. But once we do, once the last old bird race, obviously the cocks is paired up to the hens and they've actually all just started bringing the youngsters now. Um, there's, there's going to be 20 youngsters there, late breads, which um, I'll put them up for sale. Um, but they, I've only bred off the very best pigeons, what's one in there, top the fed. Uh, but once they're on eggs, <coughs> um, 
we've done this the last couple of years, and the same with the hens, they're all getting treated. Um, we use we use a para stock, just just a para stock, salmonella, uh, ten day treatment, so that the pigeons are getting cleaned out. That's we used to down on eggs after once the season, they, once they're down on eggs, they'll they'll get that for ten days solid, so that there's there's nothing uh, hanging on the pigeons. A couple of years ago, we had a problem um, with a couple of pigeons where normally, in years gone by, we would treat them with a parastop three weeks before pairing up. But now we do it um, as soon as the race is over. We wait till they're on eggs, and, and then we'll do that then. Um, obviously, feeding wise now, um, because they're, they're on eggs and youngsters, um, they're on a good mix, um, Premier Board actually from uh, Swainson's, which is a mix what's got a lot of variation in. But um, same throughout what we do throughout the season, we give them the, we've been using, this is a calcium product uh, from Kevin Winder, yeah. not promoting Kevin's products by any means, it's just a product what we use. And uh, they get that in the water every Sunday and Monday. Every Sunday, Monday. Yeah, right throughout the racing season. And um, another product, which is what we've, it's from yourself, the 45 product. Yeah. Our pigeons throughout the season, not so much after they finish racing, but they, they get that every Wednesday in the water. Yeah. It's, it's, to me, it's a bit like a red cell product. It's it got, is. It's it got is. all iron and vitamin products in, and we've yeah. used the red cell product for years. Yeah, it's and got everything in. The stuff we've had a few, Chris, uh, we've used it the last three years because we yeah. couldn't get the red cell. Yeah, and, it, uh, yeah it is. It's a product that... The all-natural product. Yeah, it's all-natural, it contains from, everything. Yeah. Uh, and it's made up from, tell you before, horse, race yeah. horse products. Yeah. Which a friend of mine is an agent for Equine America, uh, and he helped me formulate that. Uh, there's a few people have it, but uh, Richard has had it for about a number three of years. years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, about three years since we met. Yeah. that, that yeah. note. Uh, but yeah, when what day do you give the Wednesday? Uh, the yeah. Just on a Wednesday. Just on a Wednesday only. When race? We try to keep any products what we give them uh, natural. But yeah, we're getting back to. Um, as I say, the racing season's finished. They're just on a, go, a, a good basic uh, feed at the moment yeah. um, while they're feeding these youngsters. And obviously, the, the pigeons have started more. Yeah. Um, once these youngsters are weaned, we'll just keep them on that uh, breeding weight. Uh, the Premier Gold. Yeah. Or I'll go and buy some uh, a good mold mix, just a general mold mix. Yeah. And they just fed on that till they get right throughout the mold. Yeah. But grits essential. I mean, we use the expensive grit, twenty-five pound a bag. The aniseed. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we waste more than the eight, but we've never had any problems. You buy it in in the twenty kilo. Yeah, bags, yeah. yeah. They, they get that every other day. Um, they want all the grits and minerals, and as I say, the products in the water, which are just natural products. Well, as I say, that's that's full of the calcium. Yeah. There's other stuff. I mean, I can go through that now if you want, what we we'll, give them. Yeah, we'll do that a bit, yeah. a bit later with yeah. racing products and that. But just going back to that parastone. Yeah. So pigeons have started mopping, they're not, they're not being in heavy mold, will they? Well, they haven't like, started mopping because oh, obviously couldn't. they were still on eggs. They've just started. So you give it them um, before you know they're going to yeah. drop into mopping? Yeah. That would be a question. Well, our season this year, actually, we normally would have 16 races in the programme. But with us having 15 continuous inland races due to the situation in yeah. the channel, even though we did find the channel, um, it was a week earlier finishing yeah. to start with. Yeah. These so pigeons you know could have been, yeah. These pigeons the could have been, at the end of the season, they, they were up and down like yo-yos. We were, we were wishing there could have been more old bird yeah. races, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. season had finished, you know. Yeah. Um, but the health of the pigeons is obviously paramount. Baths once a week? Our pigeons, the only time they ever get a bath is on the deer basket. It's deer so basket? Yeah, but obviously now that the pigeons have um, finished racing, the bath will be out every other day yeah. to help with the mould and obviously keep the, the feathers clean and keep the birds in condition. Yeah, you. when I were here last time, 
I know a lot of people after racing don't let the birds out oh, at, just at all. You let your birds out yeah, all every, the time, every, all year round. Yeah. We keep pigeons to enjoy them. We don't keep them just to lock them up and have them as machines. We keep them because we enjoy watching them. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know these pigeons. Is, I mean, once the young birds has been in and out and done or trained, whatever, well, what do you do? We finished. Yeah. We sit here for an hour and well, let have all the cops yeah. out. And, yeah, yeah. And, but no, they'll, they'll get a bath everything, but as I say, they've started to break in the mould now, even though not the, the young youngsters. Yeah. Um, but as I say, they'll get a bath every other day, and, and the pigeons will be diving in, you know. The tough pigeons up here, they even have them out when it's absolutely pounding it down with rain. Oh uh, no, you, I'll exercise kiss. even throughout the race and season yeah. when it's raining, these pigeons have yeah. got to go out. And uh, even though we only train once a week now, uh, with the old birds, which we're going down, but I'm sure it doesn't matter what the weather like, but we're now in, in the young bird season at the moment, and uh, our youngsters will, will go in any condition. Have you had them out today? Richard? I've had them out this morning, but it yeah. wasn't raining as heavy as this. Yeah, it's, it's raining very heavy. Uh, but I'll take them in, in, in the full crowd. Yeah, someone else here and I interrupted. <laughs> I handicap. Yeah. Tell the man when you bust his shirt. There's always. Hi, Yeah, there's somebody had the birds out now and it's absolutely chucking it down. Uh, so, yeah, some of us are probably too soft and wrap as pigeons in cotton wool uh, and, and, and don't have them out in this. But, like Richard said, pigeons are there to enjoy and they're both retired so you can have a coffee and let your birds out. Well, you've got to have a tough selection of uh, pigeons as well, you know, or if you keep them to rehearse, the only way you want to find out if the any good is, is, is be severe, uh, so you can select them, you know, it's it's no good just having pigeons because they bred off this or bred off that, we've got unpaid pigeons here, we've got bred off the very best, what, but they're not all going to make the grade, you know. That's where the basket comes in. That's where the basket, the basket is the only pedigree that you want. You know, without results and performances, pedigree doesn't, it's, it's worthless. It's results that you want to see on a pedigree. It's not, it's not a breed yeah. of pigeon, you know, a breed is just a name, you know. These are all weird pigeons. Exactly. I've always said that. And yeah, people, yeah. if you go abroad, if you call that pigeon, like I said. It's just named after their fancy. Yeah, yeah we we'll mentioned Van den Bull. Yeah, yeah. Because they're the popular thing. Yeah. Dirk Van den Bull, that's Dirk's name. People buy a pigeon off him, they call it a dirt band and bull. Yeah. But in this country, and I always say it, people go and buy a pigeon. Yeah, yeah. And they'll say, what breed have you got? What this, that, other? And they'll buy one, and if it's off, say, a red kickle or a red dirty, yeah. which you've got, yeah. they'll say it's a band and bull. But it's a, it's a weird brother's pigeon. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we need to start looking at. But it's the man or the fancier who's got them pigeons. Yeah. And, and you've got the performances of it, so that's, that's who's they are. Exactly. You, you don't go back four generations that way, they were bought off Dirk Van Dyke or whatever. So the E's, they're not, once they're in your loft, they're your pigeons. Exactly. You've made the name for them by getting the performances. Exactly. Stubbs is obviously different. They just sell them pigeons off the back of Betty Gray's and names. So once we've gone through that malting period, do well, you still have them out every day or once a week? Yeah, no, we still have them. Once these youngsters has weaned, um, like thought, three to four weeks' time, end of August, middle of September, all of these will be split. Then. Yeah. All the old birds will be split, the cocks and hens will be split. And um, as I say, they'll be just put on a good mold mix, black minerals. I mean, there's black minerals and there's black minerals. Kirkpatrick's to me is the best yeah. minerals you can get. You can buy the other stuff and the, the pigeons don't eat. But they want grit minerals available all the time. They want fed as much as they can eat because obviously to grow the new feathers you haven't got to put the goodness into them to start with. And they'll be fed on that and then lean, coming up in the back end of November when the birds are more or less getting through the mould, we, we've already hopefully then sourced the farm beans, which is what we race our pigeons on, which has been well publicised, and uh, we'll introduce the farm beans 
into the mixture. We won't put them on it overnight. Yeah. We'll gradually, 25% Gradual. farm beans, then 50%, then 75%, um, and then they're virtually on the full farm beans uh, from November, December, January, because we don't pair up, the old birds don't get paired up around about February the 10th, to February the 14th. We're not one for early breeding uh, for our own purposes with youngsters. Um, so as I say, they, they'll be on them farm beans right throughout. Um, and as we approach the the, breed, the breeding season, we'll then put the pigeons onto a, a breeding mix a couple of weeks before, uh, well actually maybe it's only a week before we pair up. Um, we just use a general and we like breeding we buyers, we like the buyers one, and yeah. um, we'll buy a couple of mixtures and, and mix them together. Yeah. Uh, and they, as I say, they won't have been checked for anything because they've already been checked with a salmonella product, uh, just in case there's anything. Uh, we don't think there's anything on them, but just as a precaution, you know, you get paid to say, well, why you treat them if there's nothing wrong? We're not vets, we don't know if there's anything wrong. We just treat them as a precaution. It's, uh, it hasn't done the birds any harm. It doesn't hurt them. No, no. no. Unless you're abusing so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, we don't. don't. Hurt them. We, we try not to. Um, Periodically, it doesn't hurt them at all. I mean, throughout the racing season this year, the pigeons have virtually had, hardly had anything, you know. Um, let's say we'll, we'll discuss that. Yeah. So, when breeding time comes, uh, you mentioned you, you buy three mixes. You like, I know you like Bayer's corn. Yeah. People will be wanting to know what maybe them three mixes are. No, you like for the racing. No, for breeding that. Oh, for breeding. Well, we'll buy, we'll like buy the buyer. The buyer's breeding wing, yeah. and we'll buy one of the buyer's um, super breeder. Yeah. And we'll just mix them together, yeah. just so there's a variation. But once the pigeons is on um, on eggs again, the old birds will obviously once they've laid up will introduce fifty percent beans back into the mixture yeah. and that'll be the breed mix. So, so it's fifty percent the breeding mix. Two dif two different breeding mixes added together and fifty percent farm beans. Yeah. And that's what the breed that's what they breed from. Yeah. Breed from. Yeah. Uh, supplement wise for breeding anything special? We we use this right throughout out the yeah. it's the site size B B twelve. Um during the racing season, they have that in the water every Thursday. Yeah. Um, through the winter months, we'll not use it as much because they're not doing anything, yeah. the pigeons. Um, but once they're breeding, we, we go through the same cycle of what we give yeah. the pigeons week in, week out. Yeah. So this is the uh, B12. It's just from hyper drug. Yeah. It's just bit of vitamin stuff. Neil, I'll bring you back and just doing the video. Okay, man. Uh, yeah. The Cyta Boost is obviously B12. A lot of people use the B12 and iodine type products. This is similar. Uh, it, it is purely B12. And I, I've heard good reports about this. We've been using that for about five, six yeah. years. So yeah. you don't, if, you, if you've got a winning method or system, you don't change. You don't change. Even That's you feed when the pigeons aren't coming, yeah. you know that that works, so you stick to it. And that's given to young birds when they breed. Exactly when the they breed. Yeah. yeah. When how many days did you set for just breeding? One, just one. One day on a Thursday. Yeah. So you keep it same Thursday when you breed. Yeah. Thursday when you yeah. breed. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Well, on, on, a, on, a, on a, we've got we use um, it's just an oil bio plum oil from Kevin. Is that um, when they're breeding as well? Well, we, what we do, we use a few of Kevin's products, the um, Enzymac, um, and we'll put that on the corn, and then we'll put the powder on. Um, we'll use that a couple of days a week throughout the winter, yeah. um, just to keep the pigeons healthy. But obviously during the racing season, our pigeons every Tuesday, it's a pigeon, it's from Vitality, it, it's a can canker treatment, but it's a natural product, yeah. and we'll put that on the corn, exactly the same, on the morning, on the Tuesday morning, and put this on the corn and let it dry out and then feed it. Yeah. So, it's so it's a mixture of 
some flour oil, linseed oil, wheat germ oil, yeah. uh, evening primrose oil, garlic oil, and it contains vitamin E. Yeah. And then the trico. The trico powder. Just, it's a natural product. Yeah. We're just trying to keep can a beer yeah. by using natural products. On a Tuesday when racing. On a Tuesday when racing and throughout once we start the breeding period. And breeding so, as well. Yeah. But also the same deer on a Tuesday, it once again it's a product we've used for about three or four years now from Danny Henderson with Vitality. Vitality. Yeah. And that's Bronco Pro to yeah. try and keep the respiratory, respiratory. Clear. That goes in the water every Tuesday. Mm. We don't use it so much throughout the winter, but once we in the breeding period, we put them back onto the system. So the the oil, the plume oil, the chico powder on the corn, on the corn, and that, that in, water. in the water the same day, every yeah. Tuesday right throughout the year, yeah. through the racing season, and we'll only use that maybe odd times throughout the winter. Yeah, yeah, and that's. Did you use that when breeding, did you say? Yeah. To, yeah. to get them back onto the system ready for racing. Yeah, I've noticed your, your product. I mean, we don't know if it's. But the pigeon's well, health is it's paramount. It's and, uh, what they're getting. As I say, you, you know, if you, you don't change anything what's uh, working. So, your products that you're using, you're basically using the same products all year round, yeah. so your pigeons, yeah. you're not using yeah. something different in malting or breeding no. and then giving them something else when raising. Yeah. They know the products, they're used to the products. And they're they're all natural apart from yeah. the parastone. Yeah. One thing, what, once, once we come into the racing, obviously, our, our, our birds are paired up, as I say, around about the 10th to the 14th of March, uh, February, with a view of when we go to our very first race, which is usually around about the 7th of April, these birds will be going to the first race, and a, a big young one ready to come away, some might have come away, or the, or the, the hens will be sitting. We may have took some of the hens away off the Woodward Cox, but in general they go to that first race on a big use. It's a long season and it can still be cold at that time of year and we don't want the birds working too much, taking too much out of them if it's cold, it winds, you yeah. know. Some lofts to me, the, well, it's every one of the one, as I say, what works for them, you stick to it. But to me, I don't want the pigeons on split up three or four weeks before the first race. It's a long season. So that's the breeding and malting. We just start to touch on it. The next section we'll talk about racing. You just said the first race did sometimes want a baby. Some might have just been took away and they progressed from there to build them up. Uh, some good tips there, I think, as well. Using the same products all year round uh, rather than using different ones for breeding and then giving them other stuff. It's the same products all year round. Right, we're on to the old birds, old bird racing, widow pigeons. Richard's already explained they have stay at partners, which for me, if you've got room and got time, I don't think you can beat it. Widow hens compared to stay at home cocks. Widow cocks compared to stay at home hens. Uh, Martin races the hens. Richard races the cocks. Uh, and last time, I came here, we spoke about, there's a bit of rivalry on a Saturday, obviously they race together, but if an end comes first, Martin's got bragging rights, cops come, Richard uh, has, has beat him. So that's an healthy, uh, healthy thing to have it again, I think. So, first race, Richard, it's still a bit cold, still a bit damp. Uh, you don't want your pigeons at the maximum. They're generally good at first race on a on a biggish youngster. Yeah. Uh, they'll be on the system then. Uh, so take me through from that first race. I know we spoke about the products, but they are used in racing as well. So I'll mention them again. Take me through your your kind of system from week before, say the Sunday before the first race, and then. Afterwards, we go, we're going back to what we said earlier. I mean, our pigeons, when they're in the real heavy mode, we don't let them out. 
um, but that's only for a few weeks. They'll, they'll go on, but they don't fly. You yeah. don't want them to fly. And, and, they'll, they'll and they won't fly. Um, but once you get into January and February, our pigeons obviously, you know, as I explained earlier, we like to let them out because we like to see the pigeons just start to exercise pretty well. So they, they, by the time we come to March time, these pigeons just fit anywhere. If we let them out, then we kind of open the doors. And the so there's no rushing up? No, no, the pigeons are flying freely, flying well. Um, and as I say, what I've done, I mean, although we have them 45 pigeons to race, the first race we might only send 20 pigeons, yeah. you know. Um, the cocks, we've got three separate sections, and the very bottom section, I always pair them up a week later yeah. than the other two sections. They actually don't go to the first race, but they'll still go to their second race, but on a big yard, exactly the same set. Yeah. So I've got them, you know, I don't want them all coming in the form at the same time, yeah. type of thing. Um, but leading up to the first race, obviously these pigeons have been fr flying freely and they're and the exercising quite well. Um, so we'll start training probably about 10 days before the first race. Yeah. If we can get three or four training top flights into them, um, I'll start them off at Barton, which is only about 10 mile, 12 mile, and I'll go down to Catterick or Lehman Bar before we get to the first race, yeah. which is about 25 mile. So they've had half a dozen tosses, and um, but exercise-wise, as I say, nothing's changed here. Um, on the Sunday, if we were talking of, say, we'd had our first race on the Saturday, the birds don't get out on a Sunday morning. I let them out on a Sunday night. The doors are shut, the pigeons go out, and the exercise, but they can drop on, on a Sunday night, and they just do whatever they want. Then on the Monday, they get out on a half an hour in the morning, half an hour on the night, put the flags as up, it's force flying. Yeah. The pigeons are flying well. Hand. Both cocks, cocks and hens, virtually exactly the same thing. Yeah. The only difference is with the hen birds, uh, when they drop, they, they go straight into the loft. With the cock birds, once they drop, I might be sitting there half an hour, 45 minutes. They've dropped on the front. As soon as the flags come down, the pigeons will start dropping on the yeah. front. They won't drop when the when the flags are up, but as soon as the flags are, and they'll be up and down like yours. Yeah. And, um, but it's the same feed procedure. We, we went on a feeding system in 1998. We went on to it. Going back at this loft, what we have now, uh, we put it up in in the in the autumn of 1997. And really, we've never looked back since then. The environment in the loft must be spot on. The pigeons is healthy. We've never really had any issues, and the performances and results speak for themselves. So everything must be right in the loft, and the pigeons must love want to be good. I think that's one of the things. When we let these pigeons out, the cockbirds, and once they've dropped on the front, aren't we stood near that door? And as soon as I open that door, they be like a flash. You know, uh, that's telling you that they want to begin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comfort, yeah. Comfort, yeah. Right? Well, as I say, going back to the on a Monday, they get half an hour more than night flying. But then, as I say, they do what they want for half an hour, 45 minutes, and they open down like you always. Tuesday, they only get 35 minutes. Exactly the same thing. Once they're down, they can do whatever they want, flying up and down. Wednesday morning, They'll go for 40 minutes. So we're going up five minutes building increments, up. building up slightly. Uh, Wednesday night is now the only night when we train. Take them down the Lehman Bar, as I've said, it's about a 25 mile train and toss. Um, on Thursday, 45 minutes more than night exercise. Once again, they can be out and out half an hour, do whatever they want. Friday, I let the birds out 20 minutes. I, I always let them out on a Friday, even if it's raining, they'll still go out. If it was tossing down like a day, like a day, then I wouldn't let them out. But if it was raining and it wasn't heavy, they still go out. 20 minutes, I open the doors because I want the pigeons in. But as soon as they've dropped, I push the pigeons outside, shut the doors, and I put the baths out. And that's the only day they get a bath. And, and they're diving into the bath. Going back to the feeding system, as I say, we've fed on farm beans for the past 20 years. On a Sunday, when they come back from a race on a Saturday, 
they'll they'll get their diet mix, and then they'll get buyer's breeding weight mix. If it's been an easy race, then it's only a short race. They'd probably go back onto full beans on the Saturday night. But in most cases, it's normally the the, the buyer's breeding weight, yeah. which is a high protein. It's yeah, a start yeah. weight. And then on Sunday, we always feed in the hoppers. The birds is always fed in the hoppers, but it's only put in a handful at a time. Because if you just put it in and walk away, they'll just scamp it all over the floor. So that it, it's put in a handful at a time. So on a Sunday morning when we feed the birds, um, I just put a handful of beans in the hopper. And once they've had that, I'll put another handful in. And then once they've had as much as they want, I'll put another handful in so that there's beans there. In the water on a Sunday, there's the calcium product um, from Kevin's. On a, on a Sunday night, as I've explained, I let the pigeons out and they can do whatever they want. On a Monday, it's 100%. But well, what we've actually done um, over the last couple of years, it's actually 75% farm beans and 25% buyers breeding away mixed together. Yeah. So it's still a very, very high protein mix, yeah. and that, that is the feed. Um, Tuesday is exactly the same feed, beans and 25%. It's in the it's in the mix, so they get that fed Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Always fed in the hopper, always fed whatever they want to eat. On the Wednesday evening is when the feeding changes. Um, we then go on our race mix, which is three three mixes: um, Versailles line of silver with the wood. Yep. Van Rovi's dynamic mix yeah. and Bayer's Olympia 49, 49. Which, yeah, which is a heavy it's got metals and everything. Yeah, that's yeah. the breeding mix essentially. Yeah, yeah. So that's the three mixes what you get. Uh, the racing mix. It's all just mixed together in the bin. And then once again on the Wednesday night they fed in the hopper and um, well, they fed as much as they want to eat. Um, exactly the same procedure, only putting so much in at a time so that they eat everything. I don't want them picking and eating what they want to eat. I want them to eat everything. It's the same procedure on a Thursday, on a morning, race mix, on an evening, race mix. The same procedure on the Friday. But the race mix on a Friday is left in front of them all day. You need the pigeons to me, they need to be eaten well on a Friday. I think if the pigeons don't eat on a Friday, there's nothing for them on a Saturday. By the feeding system, what we work off, we found our pigeons to eat very appetite, which is what you want, all up to that Friday. By depriving them of the carbohydrates, by feeding them the beans on the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes. Protein beginning, yeah. Week, and then you bang them with yeah. carbs. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the pigeons are eating good appetite all the way through, yeah. even more. What we do on a Wednesday evening and a Thursday evening, after they've, after they've had the race mix, I will take the troughs out on it, but they've had as much as they wanted. It might take me half an hour. I'm here for half an hour feeding them, putting a bit in at a time. You know what? Um, I'll take the troughs out once they've had as much. But before I take the troughs out, they get a handful of sunflower hearts and hemp. Just a handful, because we only have 12 birds in one section, the eight birds in the other two sections. That'll go in the hobby. And even though they've had enough to eat, they'll still go down and eat that. But we so don't overdo it. It's like the fats. It's like a fat, a, yeah. your own little fat mix. Yeah, yeah. To top them up and yeah. put that extra yeah. Uh, yeah. energy into them. Yeah. It's exactly the same with the hens as well. Same procedure. Well, what I do with the cocks, um, I've already mentioned it before and you've seen it, uh, they get peanuts yeah. on a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. When it's a Thursday, but they only get two peanuts maximum. Two each. Two each in each box, and I put it in the box, and the pigeon just standing there waiting. Right. Then what do I want to go in a box? I won't get them any. Yeah. No, you don't get none. You know, you always have them, mind, an odd one. Uh, <laughs> I've tried in the past where we'll give them half a dozen peanuts, and that and it hasn't worked to me, whether they're toxins or whatever in the wood. It's mainly only a tip, but the pigeons are standing there waiting. Where do you get the peanuts from? Just from the shop, to be totally honest. Uh, anywhere I can get them from. <laughs> but human in, consumption. Just human know. consumption. But like we said before, going through the products, as I say, if you, if you start on a Sunday, yeah. they, get the, they get that on a Sunday and a Monday in the water. Just the calcium product. Calcium Sunday, Monday. Yeah. And on a yeah. Tuesday, 
they get uh, Bronco Plus in the water. Bronco Plus in the water. And they get on the corn the trico powder. With the plume oil. With the plume oil. That's just so yeah. it sticks to it. And on, yeah. on a Wednesday, they get the fortified. Yeah. It's all um, vitamins when yeah, you when you like what we actually given them, you know. And then and then on a Thursday, they get the, the B12. Yeah. On a Friday is always clean water. Clean water. Dear Friday. Basket, is always clean water. So, so that's is that exactly the same for ends? Yeah, same exactly the same. I same. mix all the waters up on Martin leaves everything to me and any stuff what we're putting on the oil like the end um the Enzymac from yeah. Kevin Wynn. And he has a young bird start powder which will use the same plume oil yeah. just to try and keep the pigeons healthy. When's that en Enzymac uh, used? Is that used in racing? Um, no, mainly just throughout the winter months. Throughout, winter. throughout the winter months. Um, yeah. And we're putting on twice a week, you know, just to keep yeah. the birds healthy. So, so we, that's, we that's, used to use the natural iron product with very great effect, but yeah. I got that off Kevin and the last yeah. few years um, it's worked just as yeah. well. So. I'll bring you back, Kenny. Yeah, mate, yeah. I'll ring you back. Yeah. We'll just finish this and then you can ring Kenny back. Is that twice, Kenny? Do you no. Or someone else? Uh, so that's basically your full routine yeah. with Alberts. Yeah. Uh, Friday night when we go and see uh, basket and the pigeons. What time do you basket? We don't start basket until maybe half past six. So when will you come and take? trays away with feed. I'll come down about four o'clock and take the trays out. Yeah. And what I'll do, I'll put a handful of um, diet mix. Yeah. Just so that they eat it and they'll mainly go and have a drink. Yeah. You and know. Still got time to Yeah yeah. By yeah. that time, basketing time they'll start to digest it. Oh yeah, yeah. So so you can get all of the pigeons on, on the night and even though they vet well on the Friday morning yeah. it started to digest. Yeah. We'll still have corn in them, uh, you know, but some but of them won't it, have any corn in. When it started digesting it's less likely to come back yeah. up like yeah. people yeah. basket pigeons were rocked out with peas, it's gonna come up. Yeah. Uh, Motivation. Yeah, well, as I say, um, they've gone to the first race, uh, more or less on a big youngster or sitting an egg or whatever. Yeah. Um, but for the first, the first five or six races, um, we don't have any nest balls. And Martin, he, with the hens, he'll give two or three the nest ball or whatever. But it's virtually the same, the same thing what we're doing. But with the cocks. Um, one week I'll put the hen in the close side, yeah. and the opposite way, the following week, the cock will go in. Yeah. So there's no contact. You can just see each of them. Is this for the first five weeks? No ball? They no just, balls. You just see each other. Just no see contact. each of them, but there's no contact. No, no. When they come back on a Saturday, obviously yeah. the pigeons yeah. have been left together, so I don't think it really matters, to yeah. be fair. Um, if they want to come, they want to come. Do you give them the ball on the Saturday? No. They just see no. each other. And this season, them cocks will have only had the balls out of 15 races, I would say, five times. Yeah. You know, I'm just alternating. And what I do when I start using the balls, one week I put the ball inside of the closed half of the box, and the other one I put it on the other side of the box. And I put the hen in one, as I say, I keep alternating it. You know, cock in lock, yeah. it, one week, yeah. head in the lock, yeah. section. Yeah, and there's a couple of weeks when I, I, I obviously let them up in together as well, but yeah. only a few times throughout the season, yeah. you know. Um, as I say, if the, if the pigeons are healthy and they fit and they're good enough, they're going to come. You just need that little bit of extra motivation. Yeah. As, as I've already explained before, as soon as I open them doors, them coffers, yeah. they want to be in straight away, you know. Love of all as well. Yeah. Ends, is that more or less the same what Martin will do with ends? More or less exactly the same. Um, and we'll leave them together. The hens is normally, if they haven't come very well, um, or we haven't had a good race or whatever, they might only have the cocks for half an hour or an hour. But in general, they normally left overnight. What I do with the, the cocks, I'll be honest with you as well, is twice this year, I've like, after maybe five races, I've left them together for all overnight. And then I've left them together for a, for a couple of nights yeah. just to give them that love revival, the yeah. mini relationship. But they've been out with yeah, them yeah. so long, they have that extra time yeah. to get that 100% yeah. love. 
yeah, just, back. just to bond them back together. Yeah. And I've let them out together on the sun and everything, you know, and had a bath and that. You know, as I say, normally our bath, bath day is only on a Friday, but if I've left the pigeons together, yeah. then I'll obviously I'll, I'll let them all have a bath together because they're chasing each other about, you know. Yeah. Um, but no, they only actually give them the nest spores, as I say, three or four times throughout the season, to be fair. Um, there's no hard and fast ways, you know, there's no secrets, no. you know, um, the management, I mean, we, I mean, at the same time every day, morning and night, you know, doing the same thing, like a, a routine. Well, the routine. But you can only, if people are working shifts and they can only do what they can do and they've just got to do the birds the best they can to their system. Um, not the other way around, don't let the birds be telling you what to do. You know, they've got to work it to your system. Yeah. Yeah. Right, next section, hens. Uh, and this is quite interesting. Uh, I know a few people want to do it similar. But, uh, the success of this loft with it is uh, quite astonishing, really. Right, as we said, uh, we move on to hens. Uh, Cocks over the last few years have flown a little bit better than the ends, uh, but the ends as well uh, have achieved some amazing results. Uh, and we'll show you the accommodation a little bit later where they kept and the Avery scenario that there is uh, where they kept during the daytime. System is the same as we've said, they are raised to stay home cocks. And when we show the accommodation, the perches are up at the minute in front of the yeah, boxes, aren't yeah. they? Uh, midweek, Richard will tell you about an old midweek V perches, Avery. Right. Uh, and then yeah. they took off and they got the cops. So we've got an end to show you here as well, uh, very shortly. Uh, but well, take yeah. us just through the, the ends. Well, uh, it's virtually exactly the same uh, system. Uh, as the as the cock birds, the hens actually maybe get uh, exercise wise where I was only building the cocks up half yeah. an hour. Yeah. The hens will maybe get forty minutes morning and evening because they don't be allowed to drop not, and be, yeah, yeah hens still not bounce off yeah, like cock. Yeah, we don't want them pairing up to each other. Yeah. So it's virtually exactly the same. Uh, as I say, they do get um, on a basket night. They'll sometimes either get the same treatment as the cocks or they might have the, their partners for a couple of hours before they go to the basket and then they left together all day Saturday and split on the Sunday. The main thing for that is obviously them hens have seen the partner on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and very, very rarely will get any of them wanting to pair up to each other. Yeah. Because they'll only be spend another, more time with yeah, cock. they'll only be another four to five days when they actually see in the partner again. Yeah. Um, but we had a fantastic hen, uh, Mojo, Blue Pie then. We finished the racing after last year. Tremendous. Eh? She, yeah, she was bird of the year in the Western Amalgamation. Um, we were third, fourth and fifth in the middle distance class of the Titan Games. Um, I think she was the, the pig, all three pigeons are coefficient was that close together. But she took the amalgamation out at Eastbourne. Um, she had a, a third amalgamation when we were second and third, the pigeons had come together. She had a fifth amalgamation. Fantastic performances. And this, this hen here is actually a 2020 pigeon, exactly the same way, the same year. Uh, but it was out of the, this might have been out of the first nest, and she was out of the second nest. Father to this cock is a very, very good pigeon, a pigeon we call the Blue Veil Ass. He's a Mickey Collins pigeon. Um, he's through Olympic Rosita, he's got, he's got all the right lines in him. But this year we decided to fly the channel, obviously we had to have the vet visit and all the yeah. paperwork and everything what went with it. And um, this then as, as a youngster actually, uh, it was first in the breeder by uh, like a hotspot, uh, yeah. money race, the first yeah. one. And then I think it was out of the actual race, the Uber National, I think she finished second or third. Uh, she won about four hundred pound in prize money. She's got quite a few minor fed and club positions, uh, but this year um, she's off the the Mickey Collins Blue Veil Ascot. But 
The mother is a daughter of Little Joe, the Rudolph Pigeon, who has been phenomenal pigeons. And uh, from the first Aris this year um, in France, which is, was 365 mile, she was 13th Western Amalgamation. There was only 230 birds in there. No good kid myself, you know what I mean, we're not here for that. Um, but out of the fans is what's sent, that's all you could race against. Two weeks later, <coughs> we sent her to Roy, flown full widowhood, you know, sent her to Roy. Um, and these were all classed as NEHU open races. Um, so the first race, there was 1,500 pigeons away in the NEHU. The next race, which was Roy, which is 390 mile, she was second West Durham Amalgamation, and she was 12th NEHU open out of over a thousand pigeons. Um, we never sent to the long race two weeks later, which was always there. Uh, so two weeks after that, we sent her back to the Roy race again. She was third Western Amalgamation. So, so this year, she actually has a second, a third, a 13th and an 18th amalgamation and she was also 12th NEH Open and 20th NEH Open. Um, That's some pigeon to a, so in one year to a crew and a mal uh, result. Was as I say a full sister, uh, yeah, full phenomenal but we put her in the stock loft and uh, we've actually had her pen on the red turkey for her as a young support in the sale out of an actual pen. You know. The results of them two. Yeah, well, well, Red Dirk, as I say, uh, seven or eight first clubs and top the fence six times, but once again, as I said earlier, you're not looking at that. You're looking at he was fast, fastest out of 8,500, fastest out of 5,500, fastest out of 3,000. His performance is phenomenal. That's what you're looking at. And that's what you're looking at. Uh, but she's been a, a consistent pigeon. Um, more of a distance pigeon, really. Yeah. You know, but obviously we didn't have the opportunity last year to race them out the channel. Yeah. But as you can see, they, they start to go well up in the yeah, she's in the wing, got you know. Six to go. She's but they were the hens. Um, getting back to the hens, we were first and second fed the first race of the season. They were two hens, yeah. and they were they finished third and fourth out the just short of six thousand pigeons. Um, they were flown on Widowwood after the first race, right throughout until about four weeks before the end of the season uh, when we paired them up. We've always had fantastic results once you pair the pigeons up and get them onto eggs or youngsters yeah. to give them that extra motivation towards, back end towards the back end of the year. <coughs> Just explain the, uh, the Avery situation. Well, what happens is with the hens, um, Chris will show you, the, yeah. the it, at the moment in the loft, because these are now split, um, they're not split actually, the partners are still yeah. with them, but the boards are up in the loft and they can only sit on feed perches. But what happens is with the hens, we've got an aviary to the side of the loft, uh, it's got box perches in, but there's only one pigeon to get in the box. And we put slats on the floor and they're on a, an angle like that so the pigeons can't actually go down and pair up. Uh, once these pigeons have exercised, as soon as they drop, they get, they get fed a little bit and then they push straight through into the aviary and they're in there all day until exercise period or training period comes on a night time. So virtually they, they're in there half of the time and then when they come back in the loft on a night they can only roast on the V perches. Yeah. On a Friday, uh, which is most of our days now, we're basking it on a Friday yeah. where there's not racing the channel as such. The, uh, <coughs> the vape purchasers took down uh, maybe four o'clock, five o'clock before basketing. <coughs> That's the only time they're allowed to go into their, their boxes yeah. during the week. Um, so they're deprived of the boxes? They're deprived of the box. And yeah. as I say, once again, we might have the cock sitting on the front because we have a five inch gap on the front of the parton. Yeah. So the cock can either sit on there or the cock will be in the box yeah. and vice versa. So we do Same, do, as, same as the cocks. Yeah. Yeah, but we do leave them together a lot longer um, over the weekend, you know. Are the, the ends trained once a week, same as they the cocks? They just train the same as the cocks now. In years gone by, uh, as I say, I was self-employed and I used to work either and everywhere and then wherever I went, the pigeons were took. It doesn't make any difference whether it's north, south, east or west. Pigeons know where they live and it's just 
appear to be my form. So weather dependent now these days, we have both been retired. Weather dependent Wednesday is Wednesday. preferred training. Yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday tea time. Wednesday. Well, what we found is the pigeons are flying just as well by only training them once a week. The only issue we're training them every day of the week is obviously we really haven't had much problem with the hawks or whatever yeah. mud. There's always that risk, and there's always the risk of them getting banged up or hit wires or a tree or something. Where yeah. training them only once in a week, you've eliminated all of that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, as I say, the hens are fed exactly the same as the cocks, same procedure. Are they fed to appetite as well, or they fed lighter? No, they fed they fed to appetite. Yeah. Yeah. The results for her and her sister are. Uh, well, the father of her, pigeon we call the Blue Bear Lass, uh, we bought him at the sale at Blackpool, uh, Mickey Collins, uh, 2015 pigeon, and uh, I think he's bred us about eight fed winners, but top level winners. Everything what's come through them has been really, really top pigeons, you know. And we don't breed a lot of them, uh, you know, we no. only breed a maximum of three and four to go into the race team. It's only the past couple of years. Uh, the little Joe pigeon, phenomenal breeder, you know, we'd only ever put two, three maximum in the race yeah. team. Yeah. So our feelings are, is if they're good enough, they should still be there at the end of the year. If you had a bad year's breeding season, and you bred six or eight of them, you've got a lot full of none for so good. Because you get years where uh, you can have a hell of a breeding season, and you do exactly the same the next year, but they're not the same. Yeah. You know, the results yeah. aren't the same. And you, the pigeons aren't overbred from, no. like you just said. No. There's not many rounds no. bred from them at all. No. Which, for me, <coughs> I think when you lightly, you breed lightly off your, your pigeons, you're liable to breed longer than just hammering them, getting four or five rounds. <coughs> uh, well, you'd say it's all about the quality, really, isn't it? But, uh, no, she's, uh, as I say, I think... Uh, over 250 miles, obviously, this pigeon's a better pigeon yeah. than racing up to that distance. You know, it's probably this year we've sent it to three. We didn't bother sending it to the last channel race. Um, to be honest, if we knew they were going to be up on the Friday, they had no chance of a race on the Saturday whatsoever. But they said they couldn't liberate them on the Friday because they couldn't get there in time. Well, we know that that wasn't quite right because we managed to get them there and liberate within two days. Um, and the only option they had was to liberate on a Friday, and they did, and they got a good race, and we would have sent this pigeon along with others, but uh, she was left at home anyway. So that's the ends. The trees are uh, nice type, medium, yes. just above medium, you know. Most of our pigeons are, uh, are small to medium. Uh, some of the, the red kittle cop, it is a big pigeon, and his children are... The hens are just small to medium, but yeah. the cocks is uh, more to medium, you know. Not large, but a uh, bigger cast pigeon, you know. Is that what you prefer, Richard, for a pigeon? Well, most of our pigeons, they're shaped like a wedge, yeah, you know. Yeah. The balance is good and everything yeah. on them, and that's, that's what they would... Pigeons come in all shapes and sizes. As long as they win. As long as they win, but I'm not really a one for big, big, big pigeons, you know. Yeah. Not for racing. Sometimes the bigger pigeons, obviously, they go in the stock loft. If we bred there uh, some pigeons the last couple of years, we bred some pigeons to go in. It's like the little jewel, we haven't got them now. And what we've done over the last few years before um, he did die, we've uh, paired his, his children together, half brothers and sisters together. So we've got double grandchildren. Yeah. And what we're doing now is we'll cross them in with a red kettle pigeon and a blue veal ass pigeon. And we have a silk pigeon in the stock loft, a check cock. It's also a Mickey Collins pigeon. Um, he's through Musketeer 2 and Musketeer 3, but we've, yeah. we've got four, five pigeons off them. Every one of them is top of them. And the top, and at top level, yeah. you know, top yeah. amalgamation, the fastest velocity. In the, bobs, in the top 20 of the amalgamation. <coughs> As I say, that's what you're looking for, you know. There's only a handful of pigeons bred from them, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's all, that's what we all need, pigeons Yeah, like yeah, it's just, it's, you need luck in pigeon racing. 
it's all about having that bit of luck. Yeah. You can go out and spend thousands on pigeons and don't guarantee. It doesn't guarantee you nothing. You know, you get some people well, they spend a lot of money on pigeons, but if they haven't got the know-how, or I'm not saying the know-how as such, but uh, you've got to have that bit of luck, as I've just said here, and things have got to be right in the loft. The environment, the love of the home, and if you've got all of that, that jigsaw's got to be yeah, complete to get the best. Yeah, we're there, yeah. you know. Uh, problem with a lot of pigeon fanciers is you try to overcomplicate things. I mean, I've explained how feed the system to do. There's no secrets. I keep telling you that, none whatsoever. Um, you know, I've seen people you feed them in a spoon, or they're giving them rebuild, and this. To me, it's a little rubbish. You know, don't try to overcomplicate it. Giving them this, giving them that. You know, just make it simple and make it easy to work for you. I think, I think, particularly for sprinting, I said your system is uh, the breeding mix and the beans is the protein. They're deprived of, obviously, in the breeding mix is an amount of carbohydrates, but they're getting mainly protein. But our system, Chris, we all run flies up to 400 miles. These yeah. pigeons fly on the same system. Whether it's 60, 70 miles, our first race is 68 miles. You know, we've, we've won the NEH and walked with 400 miles, we've topped the amalgamation across the channel four to five times. And is, is it kept it's the same? same exactly when's the evening car ride? Well, what happens. I would maybe do, we, we basket on a Thursday when we would have been racing from the channel, forward. I'd maybe started on a Monday evening. Yeah. You'd only get the last two or three days on the full race mix yeah. because you've got to remember those pigeons will get fed in the basket as well. And they'll get on a, uh, they'll get fed on a mixture with maize and yeah. you know. So, so it's not a sprint our lots are not sprint lots. We dual purpose. Yeah. Any race sprint these, yeah, these pigeons up the four hundred mile. Yeah. Uh, because we've never to me if you're going to be racing over five hundred mile, you need a lot of pigeons. And we would only have four, three or four pigeons we can select yeah. from. So we're not really geared up for that. But sprint to middle. Sprint to middle. It's Proteins and then the yeah. last two or three days. The carbohydrates. The carbs. Yeah. And just to yeah. get them up. Yeah. Do you find that when you Our come to basket... Our pigeons are never heavy. heavy. They're never heavy and they're light and buoyant. Even when they, even when we're on the beans, they can eat whatever they want. But you yeah. can go in the loft and pick a bird up. It's never full of corn. No. They only eat what they want to eat because yeah. they don't really like them. Yeah. You know, they have to eat them, otherwise they'd starve. <laughs> but, yeah. Do you find that when you basket them after them few days of giving them them carbs, they, you they feel like they're boiling, yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 yeah. they're blown up, yeah. they, they're ready. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can see the difference in the pigeons, you know. Um, I mean, they go on about all theories, about the feet have to be pink and clean, uh, the throat system, the underneath the thing. I've gone in and the loft like lots of others when I'm, we've won a race and it's doing well at high level and I'm looking and think, but what's different than that pigeon to the others? None whatsoever. None. It's just, it's been switched on. It's right. It's motivated. It's one to be on. I've seen them, the scale on them, all different colour. Uh, to me, none of that works with me, just as I say. We all like to see things, but... I like to see that nice skin underneath, but I, yeah, when yeah, I flew, we all do. But I, do, I don't think it actually makes any. No, difference. when I flew with my brother, uh, 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 Daryl, uh, uh, Daz, we only had a few with little cocks, and they were flying out of the skin against the odds. Really, some weeks we only sent. I can remember one race we sent six, four out of six were fed toppers, and I think we had that race. I think we had four in the first fifteen of fed them days, maybe two and a half, three thousand. And we could never get skin on them, clean no. them. It, it weren't purple, purple, but it weren't no, no, what you'd no. like. And, and they were still doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, theory. As long as they're nice and silky, you know, they've got to be silky. The feather quality. Feather quality, yeah. As well on, on her. It's, she is like silky. Yeah, yeah. But they've got to be nice and silky. And, uh, yeah. But no, there's, uh, as he keeps saying, there's many roads to leave to go on. Just do your own thing, what works for you, and yeah. hopefully if anybody watching this today, as I said, and pick some up, and hopefully that it'll help them, you know. Yeah. One thing sure what we do is, after the very first race of the season, the birds get wormed on the Sunday. 
and then after the very first race, after the very first race, old birds and young birds, old birds and young birds will get wormed just on either either mechanism, whatever it is, moxie deck, moxie deck, just a wormer. And then ten days later, I have a mech team to the ah, They said it does work. Yeah, you're better well, off with moxie, moxie deck then. They get worm, and I'll do them twice a year, Mike. Because I think worms can be a big issue. Yeah. A few years ago, uh, I had a real good pigeon in the stock of three bits of amalgamation with it, and uh, I just thought, bad, that cock doesn't quite look right. And I picked them up, they had no weight on them at all. And uh, it's dropping us. Because we had up trays, yeah. you know, and I wormed them, and within two or three days, the pigeon was back to normal. You know, um, so I think worms is a, a bit of a factor. Try, as I say, but it's not an antibiotic. No, it's a natural no, product. Yeah, it is. So just keep on top of the worms issue. But one thing, what we will do as well, five races into the season, the birds is treated again with palastor right. as a salmonella right. for four days. So let me get this right then. After the first race. They wormed on the they Sunday. wormed on the Sunday as soon as they come back because all the youngs have been took away then. And after the, uh, is that just for old birds or young birds as well? And young birds. Right. Old birds and young birds are wormed after the first race. And then ten days the later Sunday. we'll repeat it again because to break the cycle in case there's yeah. been any eggs. Ten there. days after repeated again. Yeah. Which was a few days after the second race repeated again. Yeah. After the fifth race, fifth race of the old bird season, they get the para stop again. Yes, for four days. For four days. Is just that in case they picked, as well. Yeah, just in case oh. they picked anything up in the baskets. Yeah. And also, one of the product what we use, we use nasal line. How often? More or less. That? Well, before the nationals come up in the old bird program, uh, a week before we the nasal line the yeah. birds to get all the mucus to get all the mucus out. We'll only do it the once. And the young birds, after the first race, we just done ours there uh, the other week, and uh, the line there as well, yeah. just to keep the heads clear, just right. in case, just to keep on top of everything. Yeah. Right. So, so, yeah, there you go. Worming after the first race, everything's same, cocks and young birds, it's all same, yeah. Yeah. same system. Yeah. Uh, and then after the fifth race, four days on, on Parastop for the Salmonella. E. coli type uh, yeah. problems that you can pick up. But what we do with the young birds as well, um, from the very first race, they have um, nine fewer mice in the water, come up after two days. Is that first drink or first drink. on the evening? No, nine no, fewer mice. Just in case they've actually picked up. With all the problems now with yeah. the young bird sickness and, yeah. and that, you know. Um, it's just something to try and uh, eliminate, yeah. you know, in case they have picked anything. Yeah, to be fair, I don't say. Yeah. And I think, as we've said before, natural is the way forward, but particularly with young birds, mine get a broad spectrum uh, Saturday evening and Sunday, uh, particularly for the first three races. Yeah. Yeah. And it just like you said, it keeps anything at bay yeah, that they can pick yeah. up and easily so fetch that sickness on, which you don't want when you're racing. No, no. Well, very good. Right, we'll touch on young birds now, although we've gone through bits of it uh, when we were talking about the ends. Uh, but we'll just go through the feed when they're weaned, which I, I would imagine uh, it'll be. What they, what they reared on more or less and then we'll go through getting them flying is there a change in feed and then up to uh, training and then latterly the motivation so what what feed are they weaned on to? they weaned Just, on to the bias breed weaned yeah. to be honest and, and that's what breeds on as well yeah. um, once they've been weaned um, Go on to buy his breeding wing, but we'll mix the super breeder in with it because it's got the mares and that in. Yeah. And after about a month, uh, they more or less just go on to full buyers yeah. breeding wing, fed morning and evening. But we're always giving them the grits, as I say. Yeah. Um, once the young ones start flying pretty pretty quick, I think you want your young ones up and flying to me within two or three weeks, to yeah. be fair. 
to get them up and these what sit on the bottom and that I think then you have problems with them later on. We're not great young bird flyers. Our aim is really old birds. The old birds for one, two, three, four, you know, the racing lives. The only young birds for be all and end all winning young bird races, we're not really bothered about. Even though we still fly competitive and top the fed and that. Um, what does I say? More so now because there's more problems with young birds, and half the time when you're wondering to yourself, is it worth it? You know, we do have them on the dark. We put them on the once they've been weaned. We normally put them on the dark. Actually, we're not taking any young ones off till the till the first of April. So we wait till they're more or less off, and then about the third week in April, we'll put them on the darkness. Um, this year we even contemplated and not doing it uh, because of the, the way the young bird race and the last five, six years we really haven't enjoyed young bird racing. You just look and, and they're all coming out the north and you're waiting all day for them, you know. Up to now they've had four young bird races. The first race was a bit of a, a funny race this season. But we, they've had good returns out of the other three races, which I'm pleased to see. You know, don't want anybody lost in young birds because they're your future and you want to keep punches in the sport. But our young birds, we'll start training them two weeks before the first race. Um, we only go to four mile, and I won't move them from four mile until they come straight home. This year, the first train to us from four mile took them an hour, and we had about 12 missing, and we ended up losing two. Since then, they've trained quite well. But we won't move them till four mile. They might be there six times, and I'll go to eight mile, in exactly the same procedure, until I get them down to Catrick or Lehman Bar. Uh, so they might have had 10, 10 training flights before the first race. Do you train that A1 then? Captain yes, yeah, we, we train on the line of flight with the young ones. Um, once our young birds have had a race, then there's a place, it's called the Chicken Farm, um, 28 mile from here. I'll go there every night with them and uh, in fact once our young ones start racing most times I maybe won't even let them out I'll just take them training on the morning to Catrick um, which is 16 mile of Catrick where I take them to yeah. and on a night I'll take them to 8 mile and I'll let them up 6 at a time till I get them down to 3 and 4 at a time and every night we'll do that for 3 weeks running mainly that's so they know how to work their way back in a small group they're using the brain, they're not just following the batches. So if they ever get split up on a race day or end up on the own or thing, they know how to work their way back. Um, this year ourselves, we're just taking very cautious with the young ones. As I say, we've had a fantastic season with the old ones. We're not, we don't have to chase any averages or whatever, but your young birds is your future. Um, I'm only actually going to, out of the, we, we always breed 48 youngsters, that's that's our maximum, we don't want any more, 48 is our team with a view that once we get hopefully down to the first race, um, if you haven't had any bad losses or flyaways, we've got maybe 40 to start racing with, you know, or you've eliminated some because they're not up to, doesn't matter what they've bred off, we've had pigeons here, you let them out, they don't want to fly, they'll drop on that shed and drop on that shed, them is no good, well, we won't say them words on you know, but um, it doesn't matter what they bred off. They can be bred off superstars. It doesn't make a hit of a difference. If it was that easy, <laughs> one would have a lot of yeah. winners, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, but as I say, we'll train them more or less to educate them. Um, the cock, I mean, this year, I'll, we've only got 13 young cocks there. There may be another two. I'll only have 15. And I'm really wanting all of those because I've got 12 old cocks to keep. Do you want to carry them over then? I want to carry them over. So I think the advice to people is don't be all, be all and end all with young birds. You know, you want them. I, what I find is with a lot of people who are absolute superstars at flying young birds, you can't fly old birds. It, you know, That's true. With systems and they maybe work the youngsters that much. Um, they need, they're still mature as babies, you know. But just to see how it's more or less training morning and morning and night with the young ones, just for education. It's, it's sometimes because we need these factories here, 
Yeah, there's a lot of pigeons on Well, at the moment, there's not a great lot on there, but at the beginning of the year, there was 150. Yeah, when just, I came last year, they were just accumulated. Yeah, and now when young ones get it, sometimes they'll just fly around and around. So, yeah. as I say, I'll just train them. It's easy enough for me. Uh, but the feeding system is virtually exactly the same as the old birds. They fed breed and wean on the morning, uh, Monday, like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. and then the race mix on a Wednesday evening, or we might delay the race mix and just give them it on a Thursday and Friday. Yeah. We're saying exactly the same. We do more or less limit the corn, they won't get any more than an ounce and a quarter a day. When we want them under, under control, they might only be getting an ounce a day. Yeah. Yeah. Just so, when we blow the whistle, if they're not in, they don't get fed. Yeah. It's got to start from there. You don't want young ones working themselves. You want to show them that you're in control. And as I say, if they don't come in when we blow that whistle when it's feeding time, they miss a feed. Yeah, <coughs> they, they don't get fed. Um, and the same if we take them training, we've done it already three times in the last two weeks. They come back and they haven't wanted to trap. They've never been fed. We're on the next morning when we took them training, they're straight in. You know, young birds is funny. They can even not be fed for a couple of days and they're still flying and flying. Yeah. You know, they, they, it's something about young birds, but they are on the, we don't put them on the lights or nothing. I mean, I think a lot of problems with young birds and it's stemmed through man-made. Should we have them on darkness? People put them on the lights. You're going against nature twice. You know, I mean, it's not for me to say, but maybe everybody should just, or there should be a rule and comes in and say, right, no one's allowed to race. Everybody has to race them on natural. Yeah. Go back to nature. We might have all of these problems, what you have, because we never had them before. And these no. diseases, uh, the airborne. Yeah. You know, I know, and it, it, you know, this rotavirus, that's what it is, the young bird sickness. Oh, it's horrendous. Yeah, it, you know, it's not young bird sickness and that. It, there's pigeons, they've never mixed with the pigeons. I mean, I know a fancy uh, who's not racing now. Uh, he's too old, but he's still kept a dozen young birds. They've never had a train and trust, they've never been with, and he got young bird sickness. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's too many diseases now uh, and young birds seem to pick anything up. Once they get over that stage of being a year old, they seem to be okay, the immune system can handle it. Yeah. But as young birds, they cannot. No. We're getting them now to the stage where you go in one day and they're great, the next day they don't quite look right, and then within ever so many hours, you have to come, them, otherwise the birds is going to be dropping off a perch. You know. Yeah. <coughs> I uh, I can honestly say, two years uh, when I didn't, I was I was just racing young birds, and then I decided to have a go, as, as we spoke about when I went yeah. into national racing, and, I, and I've come out of clubs and, and fence uh, for a few reasons. And for those years, because I was just racing old birds in nationals and sending us trainers, I didn't put my young birds on dark. For two years, never had an issue. Yeah. Never had an issue. Uh, I moved out last year, I'm back to just racing young birds, because uh, of shifts and time. <coughs> so that's my target. This year, I got young bird sickness very early. My, my young birds, I'd only been going out a few times and we're just flipping around on tops of sheds and it worked its way through a few at a time yeah. uh, and I had to cull a few yeah. that otherwise there's a drop off yeah. uh, and it just seems to be getting harder and harder yeah. and I do think it is because of what we do uh, darkness, lights I as well use lights uh, to try and prolong yeah, yeah, my noise. lights are on they come on at five in the morning Till, till half seven, eight o'clock when it's bright, and then at night time, I can go to bed at ten o'clock at night, look up garden, and it, it's, it's like Blackpool illuminations because they're on yeah. while half past ten. I think they race better with it, but it's no good for them. No. If I race them as old birds, I don't think I'd do that. No. The uh, problem is now and all, uh, I mean, no, not us in particular because it doesn't appeal to us, but. A lot of people seem to be breeding double the amount of youngs just to what they would have years and years ago. I did that We've got less well. fanciers now, but we've still got the same amount of pigeons going because yeah. a lot of people are keeping more pigeons, but that doesn't appeal to me. It's a mistake. I did it myself this year. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Our loft there, um, 
which will show you if we breed any more than 48, 50 young birds maximum, if we put any more in after that, we then start having problems health wise. It's telling you that the loft, and that's quite a big loft, yeah. what we have, and the ventilation through the tile roof and everything is there. You know, get start at number that is yeah, yeah, that, yeah, naturally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I shall not do it again. I, I'll hold my hands up. I made a mistake this year thinking, partly because of the fed that I'm in and the position I'm in, I thought I want a bigger team. Uh, and because I was just racing young birds, I've never had a big team. But I lost them all and I'm down to my numbers that I've always had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think the problems are man made. Yeah. I mean, our youngsters, is, um, we split them after the first race. So we've got cooks and try to motivate them that way by flying them up to the door, you know, and letting them. We did have quite a few pairs pairing up to each other beforehand, you know. Um, so that's the motivation. But I think if you've got young birds even in together and, you, and you're getting sitting eggs and things, that motivates them, you know. But sometimes on a team performance, maybe it's, uh, if they are split, sort of semi wheel but. Yeah. but our youngsters are only hatched in uh, March, so they're not early bred youngsters and uh, to sexually motivate them you maybe do need, but as I say we don't really bother about that. Uh, I mean I know Fancy's got some pigeons from us this year and I said to him, I said look, I said uh, just give them three or four races, I said and then stop them. I said do you want them for things? He said well funny enough Rich, he said I've always flew a fantastic young one. But he's trained and trained and trained the heart out of them, 60, 70 tosses before the first race. He said, but they don't fly as well. I said, well, you can't have it both ways. You can't, no. You can't have it both ways. I said, it's no good that. I said, your old ones as old birds for the rest of their lives, you know. I think too much basket, it, it breaks their heart. Yeah, yeah. Constantly. Yeah. I mean, we do basket, we'll say they're not going great they're distance. They're not going far. They're only flying uh, 18, 18 minutes from uh, Cadbury and only six or seven or eight minutes from the other place, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's, that's fine, but yeah, I think you can hammer them to death, I think. Yeah. Uh, which, historically, people have thought... The problem is now, is there's that much money to win with young birds. It's maybe ruined it, in a way. Yeah, that, you know. that's... It, for me, I've made, a, I've made this choice three times. Oh, it, you know, I'm trying to think, oh, that's yeah. all money to win, and that, but... Uh, it's maybe this is why we have not so many problems with the young birds. Yeah. And some love to yeah. suffer and massive losses. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We had a first race this year the uh, this year and the fancy up in Newcastle area. Uh, we put all his young ones on which for the first race sometimes you put all the eggs in one basket. He had seventy five young ones and he dropped forty eight. And his young ones had been well trained, schooled, everything. You know. He sent the ones he got back the following week top fed. Yeah. You know, but yeah, he couldn't understand why we had them heavy losses and other lots were lost in twenty and all. And it's like not good for your organisation. No, you not. know, and for your finances and everything. No, it's not, not at all. I mean, like I said earlier, the Fed that I'm in had losses. I've done reasonably well but They've had big losses, so now they well, What we found with our organisation this year, and as I've spoken to them, a lot of them have actually created cautious and they've been splitting the teams and only sending so many. And up, up to now, we've had four races in, and it's worked. You know, we had we flew with the weekend, we still had over 5,000 pigeons, and a lot of people still had birds in the loft, you know. So hopefully, we want to get a successful yeah. young bird season. Because, as I say, well then for I'm, following involved, year. I'm involved with helping with organisation um, and you need your finances coming in, you know, for your overheads and everything, yeah. you know, we, we, we have four wagons, yeah. you know, uh, and a trailer, and we have a garage and everything, a depot, you know, so uh, like from our point of view, you need that money coming in, you need that money coming in, and we need to keep the verdict sensible for the members to continue to be able to race the pigeons, which you know. on having a, a successful young bird season. Yeah. Yeah. And returns. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably one of them that, due to various things, even when I raced with my brother, we had to make a decision. Uh, and I got slated, really, and I don't mind saying it, when I first joined Barnsley South Road Fed. 
at the club that let me in, there were people saying I, I shouldn't be racing just young birds, I shouldn't be racing old birds. But I had a choice to make with work. Yeah. I don't have time. Yeah. My brother yeah. and me chose to race old birds. We were cocks years ago. And then I myself, as much as I enjoyed them races at National Flying Club, and it was a chore to keep old ends, old cocks, young birds, stock birds, and I race on my own. So it's either pack in or just yeah. race young birds. And I am guilty of darkness, lights, all that to try and win some money. Uh, but it definitely is the reason why we have uh, well, what we've lost done this year, me and our Martin. <coughs> we haven't bought any money rings, we haven't brought, bought any breeder buy rings or breeder buy pigeons. We try not to actually buy and fetch pigeons in because even though they come from the best lofts, yeah. you sometimes with young birds, you take on that gamble of fetching someone yeah. into your loft. So we tend not to do it. You know, and obviously we're not getting any money rings. There's lots of money to win in our organisation. Don't get me wrong, but um, you sort of keeping them going till the end of the season. Well, that thing because it's in that scheme and that's in the breed of buying. Where this year and last year we haven't done it. Yeah. Really, it can't be it. detrimental to them no. as, year, as yearlings, can't it? Uh, system same, everything same. Yeah. We'll just put Worm them in after the first race, repeat it 10 yeah, days after. The same products for the old birds and the young birds as used right throughout the season. And after the fifth race, the para stop for four days. Yes. Yeah. Same with Cox and the Just young in case birds. they've got anything on, other than that, uh, they've never been treated with anything, like medication wise. Yeah. Um, if, if the results aren't there, then I'll I'll give Kevin a ring and I'll take some birds over and get them checked out. But to, but touch wood, we haven't needed to, you know. So the uh, chooses is the oil, the plume oil, from Kevin Winter. Yeah. With that's the, just to dampen the corn. Yeah. With with the trico. Trico powder. Danny Anderson, the Vitality product. And then in the water is the, is the, the Bronco the from Bronco. Vitality. Yeah. 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 And then on Wednesday it's your product again for the youngsters. Yeah. Uh, and Thursday B twelve. B twelve. Yeah. Clean water Friday. Friday and a bath on a Friday. Don't let the we d haven't been letting the youngsters out on a Friday this time. We've just been because they've had the training flights Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. And I'll take them in anything man. Unless you you know, it's yeah. horrendous, I wouldn't think but if it's low cloud as long as the visibility is good. You know, uh, yeah. when they're on door, obviously prior to that you'll have a few pairs paired up. Yeah. I know they're not early bred, so they'll not be all paired. Yeah. But when you when you're on the door, you take the bowls away, part them off, and then bowls back in on a Friday. Yeah. And they're left together for yeah. how long? A couple, wait, a couple of hours before a basket. We'll open the door and let them run yeah. in with each other. And then we'll maybe leave them together all night on the Saturday because the only young ones trying to get them motivated with each other and bonded yeah. and split them on the Sunday morning. Uh, I think that's it for young birds. Covered well, training. as I say, we're not really, uh, we just want them to be experienced enough, uh, get a few races under the belt, and as I say, the cock birds, I'll have seen one more race out of them and uh, I'll, I'll stop them all. Stop. Yeah. Because old birds is the yeah, main, it's our the priority. Main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. The young birds with us, uh, we don't predominantly get west winds. To be fair, yeah, and the birds are coming out of the out of the yeah. north side or behind us. You know, um, if we get a north wind, then obviously the the but young birds are funny. Even if they'll come straight over, they don't pull out of the batches. They just carry on. You yeah. know. Um, yeah. Especially if you've got five or six thousand in a liberation. You well, know. exactly. Fantastic birdage. Uh, anything else for young birds, Richard? No. Away. Once again, once they finish racing, obviously uh, they just go on to the uh, molten mix, a good molten mix to get them through the mold. And mainly just the water and the vitamin, uh, vitamin in the waters and everything, nothing special. Don't give them any. No, I know no answer to this, but you'll not. You want them to mold naturally, naturally and yeah. steadily rather than yeah. forcing them in by giving them 
we've three always weeks on we've always or every year no we've always had the we've always had people who haven't got through the mode for whatever reason always and but really the odd ends man, the odd odd flight or odd one flight or two left, flights yeah, yeah. don't affect Nigerians yeah the blue cock in there is a fantastic pigeon and um, unfortunately we lost the pigeon but he as a young bird he was first club fourth fed 25th amalgamation and then as a yearling he was first club first fed first hour seven and a half thousand from Hundi. First equal first club, equal first fed, because the both pigeons had identical three the velocity was the same with the three decimals. Um, second out of nine thousand three hundred and forty four birds. And uh, I wouldn't care it was more or less the only cop we'd lost that year. I'd lost him later on in the season. Uh, and he was carrying a, a nest flight. He was carrying a nest flight. But he was a good pigeon. That's the difference. That's if he's, if he's, yeah, yeah. Um, but always, every year we've had a problem uh, where they've, they've held an an S flight. We don't know why. Um, as I say, we don't have any lights on or anything. We actually took our young birds off the darkness system this year because the weather was that hot earlier on. We actually took ours off the darkness uh, first of June. Because we're not we're not intending to race them like how we normally would full on. Um, we'll race some of the hens there because there's 25 hens there, um, and we only maybe look for 12 or 13 hens. So we'll, we'll select them through the basket because we can do that, you know. But they don't have to. I think if they get a couple of races in as you ones and plenty training. Them, I, th I don't think it's essential that you get a couple of races yeah, in, just for that bit of just for that experience. I mean, Red Dirt, <coughs> um, he'd only had a couple of races, and he could actually come back. It was third club, third fed from Thorsby Hall. The following week, I think he went away, and the following week, he'd, he'd never come back. Obviously, he wasn't called Red Dirt, he then was just a human. Um, but he'd come back four days later, but smashed up, yeah. and we just put him round the back. and. Uh, he actually only got in the racing off because he was very well bred and he had a third fed as a youngster. Yeah. But he had two withered tail flights and two um, primary flights what were withered, young fed marks. Yeah. Um, but he only had two races maximum as a youngster and he came out and top the fed twice as a yearling and, and had those defaults in his feathers. Yeah. A good picture got yeah, and then obviously went on to win what he what he won, you know. Unbelievable. I mean, we stopped them racing that way through the season last year, mm -hmm. and the pigeon would have, to me, would have won. We had races what would have sold him, but because the first two pigeons we bred off them, the Mady Cock and the Red Hen, he had three firsts between them last year as yearlings and top the fair, and second top twenty. Right, the, the performances was there, so we decided to stop him. Even though it broke our heart to stop him, yeah. you know. But, what a pity. Uh, yeah, well, we'll yeah sometimes got a. Uh, I mean, his nest mate, Czech cock in a spoil, we call him, 2926. We carried on racing him, and this year he's flown phenomenal. He has five first clubs, two first fence, second fence, second fence, third fence, fourth fence. He's flown phenomenal, you know. So. Yeah, well, uh, the results that we'll go through later and. Uh, maybe do a section on breeders, whether it's today or, or probably another time. But they're just incredible, uh, and like you said, it's good pigeons carrying nest flights, fret marks. Good pigeons have still come and, and top the fed and got up into mouth and big birdage. So that's uh, young birds. So this is the main loft, which houses the three sections of. We do a cox. As you can see, it's a pant hard roof and uh, it's bone dry up there. You can see with all the cobwebs and everything. Tiled roof. So we've never looked back, as I said, once we've uh, put just pure luck, isn't it? Is it? A this, this, uh, this is kept open all the time. And what we do a week before racing, as you can see, we've got these slides. Yeah. And what I do a week before the first race in all sections, then pulls over. We're just trying to keep the temperature in here yeah. uh, at a steady temperature. But, uh, so during racing, 
they're closed and the airflow is just in the corridor. Yeah, I thought we've got a couple of vents in the front on the doors. Uh, is there, a, is before, there a, a vent at the under eaves front and back as well? There's a vent at the back, runs yeah. all the way along the back. Um, so that's basically the ventilation. But with it being south facing, we do get, uh, it's nice and warm. Yeah. But you can never smell the pigeons in here. What I was saying before about uh, on a Friday night, that gate's closed. And what I was saying is that that gate's closed, Chris. Yeah. And the cock will be in here one week, and the hen in there, and then vice versa, the hen will be here. Yeah. And the cock will be in there. And the next pole, I'll sometimes just put it here or I'll put it in there, Yeah. you know. Sometimes I'll let the pigeons just do what they want and just tread. If they want to come, they're going to come, Yeah. you know. And get this pigeon here, this is the, this is the nest mate, it's a red dirt. This is the check cut was flown very, very oh, well this year. So outstanding, yeah. I mean, he, he's a big pigeon, but he's, he's wedge shaped, you know. Um, Broad flights. Yeah, very. Very broad flights on this pigeon and also um, a couple of the other pigeons. As, but he's a long cast pigeon, but uh, he's flew outstanding this what's, year. What's his results just this year, Richard? Um, he was first club, second fed, second fastest out of just under 6,000 from uh, Grantham. He was first club, fourth fed out of Maidstone. And he was no, he ain't been third fed, and he was 16th Western Wild Nation. And out of hunting, we were first and second fed. They both come together, but the other cock beat them on the pad. Uh, but we were first and second uh, amalgamation, like the top 20 result. That was 2,800 pigeons. He also has a second club, third fed, and I think he was seventh or eighth fastest out of 5,000 pigeons. But overall, he has five first clubs and he's topped the Fed twice. But in his racing career, I think he might have about 24 positions in the first 10 of the Federation. Um, 24 in first 10 at Fed? Yeah. Or first 12. Yeah. Um, but top results in the amalgamation as well. Mm. You know, we've never really bred off him. We only have one youngster in the race team this year. But he's off the red kittlecock. Um, we'll pr I'd like to carry on racing because we are a racing lot but we had a race this year the third off old, no the second off last old bird race Chelmsford and it was a, a poor race not through anyone's fault um, the pigeons did 2,000 yards a minute yeah. and um, the rain was forecast to come in after dinner and they got them up very early, they were up at uh, half past five or quarter six mm. but what happened, the rain actually came well before mm. and there was a lot of pigeons missing we had four pigeons missing, every one of them federation winners mm. and this pigeon was one of them and uh, we got a phone call on the Monday evening um, a, a guy, had actually not a pigeon fan, she actually picked them up out walking his dog only five mile away, pigeon couldn't fly another ten yards but and the know. worst fear was, was when I went and got them was that pigeon will be dead in the morning because they, they fly themselves out and dehydrate. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I went, I thought, oh, well, it's going to be all right. We were lucky we were to get the pigeon back. We were over the moon. You know, we were devastated. We had four pigeons missing and four top pigeons, mm -hmm. you know. And we topped the amalgamation the following week. That's the highs and lows of pigeon Yeah, missing. one week up, yeah, one week down. Yeah, yeah. But he's been a fantastic. He's won in the show pen twice the same pigeon. He looks the part, doesn't he? But these flow fantastic. This red cock, he's like the red kittle van and bulk line. Yeah. Um, and through the parkside Lillian pigeon. But this red cock's been, a, he's a good pigeon. He's only two year old. He's through where uh, the little Joe, he's a grandson of little Joe. He has a first club, third fed, third amalgamation. He was when we were first and second. He was actually second to that cock. Oh, uh, second to the checker. Second to the checker. Um, he was, I think, he was fifth fastest velocity that day. He's there, got four good, four good positions, you know. Only two, you know. 
What does it say? Is it tape form to have many pictures on? You like to keep your. Uh, you get paired to the same hens every year, regardless. Yeah. I was just going to say that, yeah. yeah. And you like to keep your, your race team young as well. Well, these, this year our old pigeons are flew outstanding. Yeah. I mean, these are 2019. Our yearlings haven't really stood up um, this year. The ones what we've got left have, um, but it was mainly all yearlings what we lost this year in racing. But this che this checker cock, he's through the musketeer cock, who's a super breeding pigeon. This cock has a second amalgamation, a fifth amalgamation, fifth. Um, I, I couldn't go on, the amount of positions what he's got, unbelievable. Him and his nest mate, his nest mate was first club, first fed, first out of 2,800 pigeons. Uh, this is one of the pigeons when we were third, fourth and fifth in the um, Titan games. He was one of those. Again, now the last race we were first, second and third. Uh, he was second of the pigeon, what topped the amalgamation for us, who was his full brother. But, um, just medium to small. He has about three or four fists in the club, you know. Great pigeon. Come on in. Pigeon he took the fed this year. He's a, as I say, he's a four-year-old. Our four-year-olds mm. really flew fantastic this year. The older pigeons, uh, but he has quite a few positions. This cock, but this cock, um, you know, we noticed something with pigeons. Yeah. When he was on a young bird early, last year, I noticed it. He was keen as mustard. So when I paired these pigeons up, I never paired him up. I paired him up 10 days later, so he was going to that very first race on a small youngster. Got the first two races out of him, and he obviously came on a youngster, you know. <laughs> so you've just got to try and, uh, he'll probably be finished racing this year, he'll probably go over there and yeah. like be used to race a hen though, because he's yeah. a four year old. But um, as they say, he's top the fed this year, he was 13th out of about 16, uh, 5,000 pigeons. He's still the John Sutherland pigeons. Mm -hmm. He's the grandson of Dino, actually, that pigeon. Are you the. Uh, has anyone. You've got 11 first West Durham and Mal yeah. open. Anyone else near that? Yeah. Uh, Paul Stubbs has 13. Paul Stubbs. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? No. Um, no. There's another loft that had 10 firsts. Um, and some other lofts have got six and seven first, but you know, they've all been flying the same length of time as us. Yeah, yeah. You know. Come on here. Come on it's been another great pigeon. When I was saying to you before, you know, you get breeding seasons, which must just be phenomenal. Yeah. This is a 19 pigeon. Yeah. 19 with a good year. Fantastic for feeling? us. Yeah. He's off. He's a, he's a brother to that checker cock up there, but off a different mother. Yeah. He's through the musketeer cock once again. Um, he's a winner. He's got loads of positions. When we were first, second, and third uh, last year with Red Turkey, and we were first, second, and third out of five and a half thousand, three pigeons come together. Him, the blue pie, then what was bird of the year, and Red Turkey would. He ended up third on the clock. You know. But, um, Broad flights again. They're very <coughs> out of that musketeer line. Um, they all they like are broad, aren't they? The broad flights. Mm. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Just chip. Another multiple winner. Top the federation, and when we were first out, eight and a half thousand pigeons. Um, him and Red Dirk, he had identical velocity, so mm. the way he got first fed, it didn't matter how you look at it. Well, yeah. You, you kind of split them, you know, in horse racing or athletics. If two people go over the line together, it's a dead eight. That's it. You know. So they both. They, yeah. They, they won. 
He's a 19 pigeon. You got yeah, 19 was a good year for for your breeding loft. Yeah. Yeah. He's actually off um, this pigeon here is off red dirty and mojo. Red dirty and mojo. Yeah, that's in what that's, that's a good, good pairing. Yeah, we paired them together last year before she went in back into the race loft. Yeah. And uh, he's come very he's got a few cards, nothing spectacular. But um, obviously those old pigeons are flown yeah, phenomenal. Flown. Yeah. Um, Did you want? I'd say the broad, broad flights. Broad flights yeah. again. Yeah. Well, he's Very got the broad. bulk in him. But yeah. see the mojo's off the blue veal, blue veal yeah. ascock, Mickey Collins, and the red kittle's a, a bulk pigeon. Yeah. Leo Hermans, whatever you want to call them. But he's got a few cards and uh, he flew very promising. He's one off the He's one for the future. future. We're fortunate, we've got, um, there's 12 cocks to go forward and virtually every one of them is one. Come on here. Just eight boxes in this Just middle eight section. In these yeah. Two, yeah. We so 12, again, in, 12 in the first 12 one and 8 in the other two. Once again, this is a 19 pigeon. Yeah. He's, he's a grandson of Turbo Joe and Jean, uh, which is our Rudolph, and he, he's feel phenomenal. Yeah. You know, he's, he's worn, he's topped the fed. Mm. Loads and loads of reli very reliable pigeon. Different type of pigeon to the others. Smaller body, you know. But uh, he'll be in there next year, racing. Certainly a golden year, 19 breeding wise yeah. in this well, lot. 20 as well, 2020. This checker cock, he's off the uh, musketeer pigeon. He's one of those uh, brothers what we've got. Phenomenal pigeon. He was first club, first fed. Uh, first WDA top 20 out of the 2,800 birds from the hunting race when he arrived with the the, the checker cock. Um, was to say the broad flights again out of the musketeer yeah. line. Yeah, they are broad. Um, he, he has four positions in the top 15 in the Western Amalgamation from the Maidstone races. But, uh, he's got several firsts. But uh, see, we've got some youngsters all just hatched available off these pigeons. This section here was a pigeon what uh, I had hold of last year. At the end of our video, if you yes, remember. I remember it. You yeah. said that. You, you fancied this one? Dapper Dan. Dapper Dan, yeah. Dapper Dan. I remember. Uh, yeah. He's a 2020 pigeon. Yeah. He's a grandson of uh, Little Joe, I say they've been phenomenal. Um, this year he was first club, first fed, fifth amalgamation, out of the very first Mainston. Um, out of that very fast Chelmsford race, he was second club, se first club, second fed, uh, 16th amalgamation. He's got five firsts now mm -hmm. in the club. Very, very consistent pigeon, you know. Yeah, he did say we want to watch for this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, he's come, as I say, first in the second fed, so you cannot really ask for much no, more no. if you get that out of all of your pigeons <laughs> yeah. or half a dozen of your pigeons. It'd be nice. Uh, this is the pigeon what come, he's got a few chalks leading up to the very f last race, but this is the pigeon what was first club, first fed, first western amalgamation out of the last Maidstone race, and really it was against the wind. Mm. You know, we look for pigeons coming straight out, and the pigeon come up the side of the field, and like yeah. even people said, what a fantastic performance. Yeah. Only 1,200 birds away, but 
would ease out of the musketeer. Those four pigeons I've all mentioned. There's two two birds in going in the auction off the musketeer to the cock, and what we've done, we paired him to a daughter of Red Dirk in Mojo. So she's obviously just a young pigeon we've read last year yeah. for the stock loft. But we've that that's the two, there's two mealies for your auction. You can't get any better bloodline, but you can't but you can't guarantee anyway. You, you, can. you, know, you can't guarantee nothing. You but can just try and put you know, these few together. pigeons what we've got, we've only got twelve pair stock pigeons, thirteen pair. Um we've bred a few pigeons, double grandchildren of uh, little Joe, which we're crossing onto these red kittle pigeons and the VLS pigeon because the VLS has always been paired onto a daughter of little Joe yeah. and they work fantastic, you know. Was to say this pigeon was a fantastic performance on the day. In fact I did I got caught unawares. Um we'd heard what time other pigeons were doing, like from a friend of mine, but yeah. to be honest it was a mile behind. And I thought, well I'll just put the clock on at quarter to two. And uh, it was 41 or 42, and I just looked, and there was a pigeon coming up the field. And I had to run in here and clip the battery on the clock. <laughs> this cock, he dropped in that section, and I'm walking him along in. I couldn't hear anything click on the clock. And I'm at the run in and pick him up, and I'm standing here waiting. You know, I only lost about 10 seconds because I'd obviously saw yeah, that a pigeon yeah. coming up the field and I ran in and put the clock on. <laughs> they, they were 20 minutes behind me, my friend, you know what I mean? And I thought our pigeon would have actually done a slower time yeah. because the wind was getting stronger on the side of the pigeons. Yeah, you buffering, know. Them, buffering from yeah, the side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they flew phenomenal. As I say, it's the, the same sections uh, with the slides and everything in. Uh, Identical sections. Yeah, that's the race call. As I say, I've already explained it. It's wrote on there so we don't forget. Yeah. In case, There's in case anything happens to me or my brother, we know what's what. Olympia 49, Versalaga Superstar Plus, and Van Roby's Dynamic. Yeah, and that's, just, that's the mix. You know, you can see there's a lot of maples and that in it with the uh, buyers. Small, uh, it's the small trees, aren't they? Yeah, buyers. but there's about 20 different grains in that, and that's yeah. what I like. A, a corn with a lot of variation in so there's my thinking is that there's a bit of goodness in everything mm. for them you know and then that's the diet mix what they as I say they always get that on a Saturday after they've come back diet 2000 yep. um, or something similar just give them that once they've come back for a tidbit and then uh, I'll give them that an hour after the race yeah. but as I say on the evening they'll either get the buyers breed and wean which I've got that along there if you want to look at it, it's a nice mix. But there's no fancy. Yeah, we'll just have a look in these bins, just make sure people see everything and that you're not hiding anything. Well, I haven't got any uh, beans at the moment because the season has no. gone, but obviously I did hear a video before. But yeah, that's the buyer's bead and wine, which is a nice mix, you know. Yeah. And the old birds now, after the racing season, that's the um, Premier Gold. And there's actually a, a bag of uh, Olympiad from Swainston's mixed with that, so... And that's what they're on? That's what they're now. on now with those youngsters. And they'll be on that, as I said, to get... I'll add, once these youngsters has come off, I'll add um, some, like, a good molten mix of Versailles Lager or yeah. Van Roby's. But okay. some of the price of the corn now, it's just beyond a joke. And obviously we've proved that you don't need to be giving them all this we feed the yeah. beans. You don't need all of this named corn and this and that. But, uh, You've got your little... Uh, that's the way there's nasal line and yeah. that in there. Um, them's collie drops. But we haven't used them but we've got them there just in case, you, you know, we ever needed. Yeah. You know, um, that's like a young bird sick. Well, that's the um, thing. Now if you're a mycin. Now if you're a mycin every, yeah. every Saturday for young birds. No, only for the first couple of races. Once, they, once they've more or less settled down young birds, um, you don't normally have much problem with them. So I, I generally don't, just first three. Races. Yeah, yeah. Well that's like the um, off, off Kevin. I'll give them that throughout the winter, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's a young bird one, sorry, which I'll give the young ones. And that might be the other one. I might have, uh, I've run out of it. 
Good uh, MZ Mac or something it's called. MZ Mac, what you mentioned. Oh, that's, that's yeah. What's this here? That's just uh, Kevin's. Uh, he gives us stuff um, free of charge. To be honest with you, because uh, obviously he wants someone to use his product, and yeah. if you get the results and everything, yeah. But, um, Kevin, you, get, uh, you get that in the water, the old birds, and um, they just get that, the electrolyte. When's that? On a return. That's in the water. Is that in every the water? Saturday, every Saturday when they come from the race. Right, just yeah. an electrolyte. Yeah. But as I say with the young birds, the first drink what they'll get is, is first three week is that or first is, couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. Is the uh, yeah salmon, salmonella E. coli type. Is just a few peanuts. Yeah. As you can see, but you say they only get two red skin peanuts. Three maximum. Three maybe on a Thursday or something. Yeah. yeah I found by giving them any more, it's not not beneficial. So there you go, you've had access to you've got the black mineral, obviously I like the Kirkpatrick. Yeah. Uh, obviously while they feed, which is very important, they must have pig blocks, pig blocks minerals, anything what they'll eat. Because they're always looking for it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the grits what we use as I say, it's like an aniseed. But it's expensive. It's Yeah, it's the Bayer's uh, yeah. multi-mineral. Multi yeah. Yeah, good stuff that. That's what I use actually. So there you go, you've seen everything. You've even seen in the little cupboards that we didn't show earlier. Don't hide anything. And that's the uh, sunflower hearts and what's mem. And when I say I give them a handful, that will be between 12 pigeons. 12 pigeons. Yeah. And maybe just add it between eight pigeons in yeah. the sections. And that's sunflower arts and Wednesday uh, and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday tea time. Yeah. So there you go. And how old did you say this loft were, uh, Richard? 1997. 1997. Yeah. We've, we've never looked back. There's vents under here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, little vents. Yeah, uh, actually, that's. The, I think we were going to put all of them in, but that's the only one we ever put in. So I know there isn't any, but we just got them in the door. You yeah. know. I'll show you the young and bird. We altered the young bird loft this year. <coughs> Covered all of this in. This was always left there, uh, like polycarbonate all the way with mesh yeah. behind. Uh, but there's air flows up there. Yeah. And the same at the side of the loft. That's the trap into it, uh, that's where they're going well, into it. This is, no, this is where we can basket oh, out, basket, we can sorry. basket out those baskets over there. Yeah. I'll get one out. We yeah, basket that's... basket these ones within 20 seconds. So there's a basket up against that. just goes on there from day one, we put drinkers and that on there. Yeah. We put a bit of seed in there, slide that up, the young ones, they run it. Run in. We've altered all of this, and what we've what we've done this time is to give them the full amount of the loft where we used to close them in there. Yeah. We darken this off with the slides, and we've got things what go in the windows. So there's much more room than just in the back. But there's only 13 cocks here, as I say. But hopefully, luckily we have there's two in there off red kill. And there's young ones in here off red jerky. And that's a lovely young one. That's off that blue VLS cock. But you'll only get a couple of more races these. these. So, because I want them for the future. But these doors is left open yeah. 24 hours now. You know. Um, so is this your cock section? Well, I'll do the, the hens is... How are you now? Show you the... Wood. Just how we let them out and switch yeah. them round each time. Come on here. The drop is just so full of them, you know. Yeah, I can see. Um, we just lift that slide up, and those pigeons, as I say, they virtually just. So that's where the. That the basket traps, yeah, straight. yeah. But when we had them darkened, you can see we've got these and they just drop the drop in the rain and then slide over. Mm. And those are on like pit wall, well, if you want to call them pit boxes. So. 
so we can just turn it we'll start turning some of them round yeah. you know so they were like little box yeah yeah and hopefully there might be an odd one of uh, two of these cocks you know mm. I'm hoping but, uh, they, I mean they've been out this morning in the rain so they don't look mm. the best but they're actually in good feather to be fair and your ventilation's left the same no sliders in here, just like there's that? No, no, there's no sliders in here. We've got a thing what we push up, because it's got a window in the front right. to darken it off. But at least they've got all of this as, uh, yeah. as ventilation, you know. Fantastic. Come on. Come on here. So that's uh, the lofts and some of the birds that are in race team that we've shown. The drum birds are in fantastic battle as well. So you've seen everything uh, regarding the race birds, the systems, the feed, the products. We've got a vent over there as you can see Chris. Yeah just at the back yeah. there. And it's exactly the same, the air can come underneath. Um, this is just new to us, the young, this like we're doing this, but uh, yeah. we haven't had many health issues with them. As I say, they had a touch of, um, that's a young cock off that, um, the messmate uh, red jerky in his boy. It's got a ruffle. Yeah, it has. Now, it must come through the red kittle line because um, I've got a young bird of hope off red jerky and it's exactly the same. It's got a, 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 a thrill. The first time we've had them, mm. Now he's a biggish board young one and as I say, he, he's not going anywhere. He's had two races. Um, that, I want them for next year. That one's a grandson of uh, Red Durkey. It's off a red and a daughter of Red Durkey. What has a first, like flew very well. She has a second club, third, fed, 14th amalgamation this year. I mean the pedigrees and the information what I've given you there, they're not really updated this year. Some of them, you know, they all of I mean Red Kit Lanning he's now been fourteen winners and uh, eleven Fed winners. You know. Fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. Well thanks for showing us all the uh, race lofts, Richard, and the uh, the birds. And uh, all your system and everything, nothing held back. No we've there's seen. nothing held back. So uh, you get some novices or even uh, good fancies. You can always pick someone up off something, you know. But uh, don't try and make it hard for yourselves. So now we're in the hens race loft. And as we discussed earlier, the big perches are on at the moment. And that's what's normally on uh, once we split them up after the first race those are on there and they left on there till basket night and then they just took off and obviously you can see the patterns behind them and we'll, as I say what I explained before we'll have either hens in that side one week and the cocks sat, sat on the front and vice versa and then we'll, we'll just mix it about with the hens as much as possible yeah. once again once we basket the hens for training they only get trained once a week we'll just drop the basket there this just slides up and all the hens are just pushed in yeah. so there's no chasing them about quick and easy off. less stress yeah that's that blue hen what we had hold of before, uh, what's flew really well this year from the channel racing and also good performance out of Maidstone. Most of these are these are cocks. That's a daughter of Red Durkey, uh, the red hen on the floor. Um, she's flown well for us. She has many positions. It's another daughter of Red Kittle. She, she's been in the top 20. This year, just a year and then, uh, out of the WBA top 20. Another daughter of Red Jerky was in the top 20. So, and, and, and what happens is when, once they drop in here, the hens, when that's shut, we put a board on there after the morning exercise. So they drop here, and our lad will feed them. 
and then they push it into the aviary, which will show you then. There's obviously a drink that goes in the aviary as well with them. So the hens just push through into the aviary and they're there all day until he comes and lets them out around about the five o'clock. As you can see, we've actually put those slats, but we'll open the door on the outside. I'll work outside. And as you can see, the airflow will go through here, and they put all the bottom off. Yeah. And this is covered. When we when we let them out, the hens. Obviously, all we do we just open that, drop and, that down. Not, yeah, they all come out. That's where yeah, yeah, but those perches they're on a slant, yeah, as well. So there's nothing and actually there's only one pigeon can sit in it. So if it's raining, they sat in here and they're not getting wet because it's fully enclosed yeah. the top and uh, halfway around, halfway around all the bottom is, yeah. is they like the, the scaffold type mess yeah, which filters, yeah. filters yeah, your air. air flow through, and they don't get a full. Wind blowing no, in, it's no. no draft. But, uh, Fantastic. It yeah. works for us, and that's all that matters, isn't it?